Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Slightly uh, different format for the angry dentist today. Hang on, let me put you down so I can get my glove on. Oh, it's absolutely snowing, it's snowing really hard. Let me show you. Oh dear. This is the, this is the situation. And this is the car I'm supposed to be driving in now. What is this, you might ask? This is a stick for getting snow off cars. And it's useful about one day in every three years. And today is the day which this stick is the useful day for. And you can't get them in this country. I got this from uh, Canada, where they deal with a lot of snow. Oh, oh, oh la, 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 la. hang on. I was going to see if I could turn the camera around, but I can't. Don't worry about my funny hat. That's another measure. That's only... Actually, <laughs> this car is getting snowed up faster than I'm clearing it off. So I'm going to get in. Just clean the old wing mirrors off, don't forget those. It's lovely, isn't it? I mean, it is lovely. Unless you have to go to work, which is what I do. I don't have to, I could just ring up and cancel all the patients. But I'm not going to. Oh, it's a radio. Right, I'll just turn you off while I get in. Hang on. Look at the. Look at the state of this. Look at the state of me. Look at the state of this car. The state of the electronics. Oh, so my hat's full of snow. Oh, look at the car. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is a good, uh, it's a good uh, sort of theme, isn't it? For a talk, things that you don't normally use. Let's get the... Let's get the puffer on. Now, have I got everything? I don't know. I can't go back inside and check. I think I've got everything. We've got a... There is a snow... Um, thing on the car now so let's just count all the things on this car and elsewhere that have come into play today right for a start I never get up early So that's one thing that's uh, very rarely happens, but it's happened today. Then, so I'm actually on my way at 10 to 8, and I normally don't leave till quarter past 8, so. Then what else? If you look at this jacket closely, you'll see it's got like a fleece inner, and that's been hanging up in the kitchen for two years, and never used that. And then this morning, my wife, bless her, said, did you know you've got a fleece that fits inside your normal jacket for exactly this circumstance? And I said, no. So we've retrofitted that, that's good. Let's just get, let's try and, yeah. Then what else? I've got, I've got this snow and mud thing on the car, which I thought, ah, no one's gonna, worry about that it's never gonna need that so but here we are in the snow because we haven't had any snow for three years I mean it's just it is a bit incredible then I've got the limiter on the car I've managed to put it on 25 miles an hour so that uh, 
I don't uh, succumb to the temptation to speed up so I'm gonna drive to work or at least until I get onto the main roads at 25 miles an hour then the car itself has got four-wheel drive which I thought you know I was brought up in the days when two-wheel drive was more effective in terms of uh, efficiency you know petrol and that so you didn't you know you, most cars had an optional four-wheel drive where they they drank the petrol because they were in four-wheel drive but no this one's compulsory four-wheel drive and again Mrs Angry's idea she said we live in the country we don't want to get snowed in we need a four-wheel drive car and blow me down if she wasn't right again it's minus three Celsius outside by the way it was uh, and I've written a car off under circumstances like this January the 14th 1983 I was driving my Ford my beloved Ford Sierra gear and uh, went uh, the, the gritters were on strike went down a hill lost control and t-boned into a uh, one of those open backed uh, you know good old boy Mitsubishis coming up the hill and uh, and that was the end of that and that car was uh, 13 months old so they wouldn't give me a new one they said if it was 12 months old or less they would have given me a new one but because it was like a couple of weeks over the 12 months I had to buy a second hand one so and I just got that's why I drive around in a battered up old Peugeot because I never really uh, ever I sort of lost my love for cars at that point right defrost in the front and rear windscreens now we're stepping up we've got the rear windscreen wiper going the front and rear demiss is going the front wipers are on automatic I'm still limited to 25 which is fair enough so what else you know I mean that that Canadian uh, snow clearer thing that's been in the barn for 15 years <laughs> ever since we well I mean it's been in my possession for longer than that but I mean I know it's been in the barn for 15 years and uh, never used it constantly tripping over it blah 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 And then all of a sudden today it's the only tool for the job is it I mean you can I mean I suppose theoretically you can clear a car off with uh, with a scraper but it's not really it's not ice you know it's more um, ice is what we mostly deal with in this country isn't it not snow and this is just fluffy snow so and it was uh, settling faster than I could brush it off and that's a big brush it's a good uh, 40 centimeters wide anyway it's all going well so far T junctions are what you need to avoid in the snow T junctions are the killers that and uh, going down steep hills that haven't been gritted I don't know, I mean, what's the situation when there's heavy snow like this? I mean, do the patients cancel? Will they cancel? I've got a suspicion that they probably, a few of them will. The situation with your staff is that uh, you are entitled not to pay them if they don't come to work, irrespective of the weather conditions. So if somebody cancels today and says I couldn't get in because of the snow, then that's a, that's a day off unpaid. There's no doubt about that. I mean, again, it's it's only because uh, if if the staff were able to argue and go to an industrial tribunal and say that uh, they couldn't get to work because of X, Y, and Z weather conditions, then and and have a day off paid, then you know where would we be? Where would we all be? It's tempting just to try and skid the car and see how easy it is to skid. But uh, I'm a bit old for that now. 
30 years ago I might have but not these days plus I've got the advantage of um, knowing uh, that uh, where the bends are on this road you know doing it every day I know which bends are dangerous even in the dry let alone in the snow so that and sticking to 25 miles an hour should see me okay so what else what else I mean obviously I'm in my welly boots because what's the point of wearing uh, business shoes in a car on a day like this when what happens is and, and that has happened to me before in another car in a Renault I just uh, came up to a came up to a junction braked in plenty of time uh, but just started sliding and slid basically down into a ditch which was uh, which was by the side of the road and then what happens is some vastly uh, more knowledgeable and cautious male comes along with his four-wheel Range Rover who just happens to have a length of rope on board or some chain or something they can always bump into a farmer around here and they just sort of back up and nonchalantly tow you out of the ditch and you just have a quick look check nothing's too bent and and then on you go you know so but you don't want to be wearing town shoes do you while you're standing outside looking like a mug you know you, you need to take your wellies on a day like this my wife's insisted on stuffing half a chocolate bar in my bag <laughs> Like I'm going to the North Pole and not eight miles to work. Man, why not? I mean, I'll eat it anyway. I don't care. Oh. So, I don't know. I hope you haven't got it much worse than we have. I mean, this is not really bad. This is just like a bit of snow, you know. It's just a dusting of snow. The gritters were out last night, but uh, the uh, the minor roads don't get much. So, I mean, uh, I mean, on the general theme of uh, taking precautions for things, we are as human beings, we are notoriously hopeless at. Uh, making provision for anything that occurs rarely even if it might have quite a significantly uh, adverse effect on our on our standard of living you know or our conditions so for example I mean we don't although they're fairly cheap and easy to obtain I'll probably wager that almost none none of us carry a smoke hood when we get on a plane although that is something the, the cheap and simple way possibly to save your life in a situation where you had to evacuate and there was a smoke around yeah lot talk about light oh, don't have any trouble with lighting today do we let's just tone it down again there you go it's actually uh, light coming from everywhere light coming from the sky light coming from the ground and this car's acquitted itself quite well I've got to say I thought I'd put the automatic air conditioning on but obviously not so it's kicked in now it's going to try and dry the car out if it needs to before all the electrics go fut but it's done the front and rear windscreen quite nicely anyway the snow's eased up a bit now and oh, we're sliding So, in uh, 
87 I think it was we had the hurricane and the uh, roof of the surgery caved in <laughs> we lived in a very we were living in a very old house and uh, well it was a converted uh, three a uh, three uh, unit sort of Victorian retail unit which had uh, shops on the ground floor and sort of accommodation above for the shopkeepers and uh, it had a very old chimney stack that wasn't in use anymore but we hadn't really looked at and uh, sure enough it blew off and it blew and it rolled down out my roof taking off all the slates and then uh, most of the debris then went on to the roof of the next door which was a Swiss chalet type bungalow with a very steep camber on the roof and uh, carried on and picked up speed like an avalanche and landed on top of his BMW which was parked outside his front door so he didn't speak to me much after that but we didn't speak much beforehand so the, the problem was not so much the roof it was the, the again the lack of preparation the uh, because in in that episode the um, the biggest problem was not so much the de the wind damage it was the rain it literally rained it, it literally pelted down for three days after that really really solid rain and can you imagine you've got Come on. Whee! Slidey, slidey. You've got, you've got a loft, right? And what do you put in the loft? You put all your old business records, your tax records, you know, old patients' notes, anything, anything that you want to get out of the way, you put up in the loft, don't you? And then all of a sudden, that loft is open to the elements and it's pelting down with rain for three days solid. I mean, you know, you have to sort of clear out as much as you can. And uh, and what you want is a tarpaulin, really, to put over the top of the roof. But then there's no tarpaulins to be had. Nobody's got one. Uh, and then you want a builder. Someone to put your roof back on. But the only builders uh, that, you know... And you would think, as a dental practice, you'd probably know a builder. You know a few builders, don't you? So give them all a ring and they say no I'm sorry I'm too busy putting my own roof back on or I'm putting my my wife's roof back on my ex-wife's roof back on or my kids roofs back on and then you know then whichever insurance job is paying the most I'll be putting their roof back on and then so you you resign to having a dental surgery without a roof I mean what do you do how can you carry on Caution. you can't a 299 traffic disruption moderate speed 30 miles per hour yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm only doing 25, so I'm only going to crawl into work. So, <clears throat> so obviously we had to stop work, and we just spent the first two weeks uh, taking, make, taking uh, efforts to try and secure everything. You know, just, just save everything, and then um, after that, you know, move it off the premises, and then try and best you can put buckets under the leaks and things like that but obviously insurance helps a lot under those circumstances again insurance for inability to work although they do they do say that you should continue to work you know which is all very well and good I mean it's all very well and good saying yeah yeah just relocate the business but obviously you can't relocate the chairs so what you have to do is you have to find some another dental practice don't you whose roof hasn't blown off who uh, has got a spare surgery and say do you mind if I just come over and use your surgery and equipment and staff for a bit now now that is where I was quite impressed because uh, a lot of the local dentists did I mean obviously they they realized that we'd lost the roof and so they were incredibly accommodating you know to uh, to say yeah you know if you need to 
do anything, come over, you know, we might, we'll clear out the third surgery for you or something. So that was good. So, uh, yeah, I claimed on the insurance and it couldn't work for a while, you know. I mean, it was a good few weeks before we could get back to work. So we're all going at 25 on it. Normally we're doing, we're all doing 90 down here. Well, I'm not, obviously. Everybody else is. And today it's 25. Apart from some idiot who's decided to drive in the second lane. Uh, and 30 years ago that would have been me. I'd have been, oh, oh, empty lane. Ah. You've got to write a few cars off before you stop making those sort of mistakes. Yeah, young lad. Why, Reg? He's got to. He's got to take a risk, isn't he? He's got to be seen to be risk-taking, young lad. He's got to pass his jeans on. He's got to impress the women by showing that he's the boldest, the bravest, the daringest of all the young lads, and more worthy of passing on his jeans than any other. So, I'm assuming that he lives to pass them on. I mean. Possibly you won't. So, and then uh, now, and then when you get to work, then obviously we've got the other problem, haven't we, of what to do about the patients. If they cancel because of the weather, what do you do? Do you let them off? Do you say, it's, is this force measure? Is this force measure? I mean, unless you want to create an awful lot of bad feeling. I suppose, I mean, Mrs. Angry doesn't want to go out today. She would almost certainly want to cancel the dentist. She had a dental appointment, so you just have to suck it up, don't you? And just have a Caution. go and. A299 yeah, traffic I know, disruption. I know. Moderate speed 30 miles per hour. Yeah, I'm moderating. I'm doing less than that, darling. I'm doing 25. I'll put it up to 27 just for you. So yeah, just have a build a snowman or something, you know, take it in your stride. You don't see much snow. Last year I was moaning that we'd not seen any snow. Year before that we'd not seen any snow. Year before that we just saw floods, everything was flooded. I'd rather have snow than floods to be honest. I don't know what the situation is going to be like when I uh, get back, you know, after if it's, you know, if there's a heavy snowfall starting about 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock this afternoon, then the best thing to do is to just tell the staff to go home or ring, ring the uh, ring the patients up and just tell them that it's just not on, there's just, the traffic conditions are too poor. In fact, it wouldn't be a bad idea just to get the receptionist on the phone and say, look, you know, What's the situation? Are you snowed in? Blah blah blah. Do you want to? I've got a cancellation earlier. Do you want to come in earlier? Certainly, when you've got snow forecast for later on, which we do, we've got snow forecast for about two o'clock or four o'clock. Um, then you might want to just push everybody up, you know, and just say, look, just come in, and perhaps instead of doing the half an hour checkup, just do like a fifteen minute checkup on the wall and tell them, right, okay, that's it. Now you can be on your merry way. Anyway, I'm still about 10 minutes away from work, so I don't want this to go on for too long. So uh, that's about it. That's today's theme. Coping with the unexpected. Things that happen rarely, but do have a disproportionately adverse effect on, uh, on conditions. I'll, uh, I might talk to you tonight and do an update. Or if not, I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Bye.